So is the main news story of the day. The PM under renewed pressure today after Lee Anderson, you heard, defected to reform the Ashfield MP yesterday, who'd been suspended for Islamophobic remarks, becomes reform's first ever sitting MP. Now, it's his third party in six years. It's quite a lot, that. He had also previously been suspended as a Labour councillor in 2018. Speaking yesterday, he explained his decision. Like millions of people in this country, I feel that we are slowly giving our country away. We are allowing people into our country that will never integrate and adopt our British values. Parliament doesn't seem to understand what many British people want. It is no secret that I've been talking to my friends in Reform for a while, and Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who feel that they're not being listened to. And like millions of people up and down the country, all I want is my country back. Well, we're joined now by Assistant Editor at The Spectator, Cindy Yu. Cindy, good news for Reform UK yesterday, was it? Yeah, this is a big coup for them because Lee Anderson is one of those outspoken Tory MPs who, not only that, has a really high profile in the public eye as well. You know, if you polled people about what the Tory MPs that they knew, Lee Anderson would be one of those names that did come up, not least because of his GB News profile. Um, Never heard of that, but <laughs> here's, here's the irony. Here's the irony, Cindy, of the situation as I see it. Uh, Rishi Sunak, who coveted this job so much that he brought down Boris Johnson, we've all got an opinion on that, <laughs> who said he was going to do things differently, such a bad judge of character, or maybe, you know, people will say didn't do, isn't up to the job, gives Suella Bravman a job just mm. to get the job, sacks her, made Lee Anderson, knowing full well what a firebrand, what an honest shoot from the hip guy is, got nothing against him, he's as entitled as opinions as other people, I don't have to agree with them, right? But the fact of the matter is you make a man like that deputy party chairman and you are waiting for an implosion. I would suggest whether he wins his seat or he doesn't, and he does say a lot that people will understand and agree with. He says a lot that people don't. Let's make that point. But for me, another example of Richie Sunak out of his damn depth, the people that he brought forward, I don't understand it at all. So it's quite a well-trodden path for Prime Ministers to bring in people from all parts of the party to these major roles. Same with Suella Braverman, especially if you are a Prime Minister who's seen as not from that wing. So for, the, for him, at the time, it would have been political cover, basically. It would have been saying, I'm also tough on immigration, I'm also tough on all these things that you care about. Look, I've brought in Suella Braverman, I've brought in Lee Anderson. And the point is, these people are there to have controlled explosions, yeah. things to dominate the headlines that would be good for the Conservative Party. Problem was, neither of those explosions were able to be controlled. Uh, Rishi Sunak wasn't able to... That's a bad judgement by him, then, isn't it? Possibly, but I think part of the problem is also the fact that the um, situation with, for example, immigration just hasn't got better. Um, and I think Rishi Sunak also was dealing with a, with, a, with a party that was a coalition from the 2019 election, both gathered together under a different Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, and he didn't have quite that gathering power to keep that or coalition together. Or political experience, course, now saw ability. Possibly, yes. There are absolutely legitimate criticisms of our immigration system in the UK, criticisms that you can make without being accused or shouldn't be accused mm. of being racist. However, what Lee Anderson was thrown out of the party for specifically was those Islamophobic comments, particularly about Sadiq Khan. He's there saying, I want my country back. Yeah. You'd be forgiven for thinking that there is a link there yeah. between him saying, I want my country back and the people I want my country back from are people of a certain religion or people of a certain ethnicity for which you could be accused of being racist. Absolutely. And, and the point is, he refused repeatedly to apologise when the Tory whips asked him to. And so the Conservative Party had its own face to maintain, really. You know, if they, if they refuse, if he refuses to, to acknowledge that what he said was offensive, then there's really very little place that the Conservative Party could go. But the question is, as well, how long have these conversations with reform been going on for? Because, yeah. again, to mention that rival TV channel, GB News, <laughs> Richard Tice, the the chairman of reform is also, you know, a presenter there. So there is, there are these links there mm -hmm. that have always been and kind of very close. I just they didn't it's even a get the exclusive on it, which I thought was quite interesting. Two of their presenters, and they didn't get the exclusive. I, 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 for me, it says nothing about um, uh, Rishi Sunak's judgment. They talk about. Um, you know, will more defect. I've just got this in from Nadine Dorries, by the way. This is really interesting. She's just tweeted, you'll have heard the news this morning, Cindy, that Boris Johnson is apparently and allegedly, yes. this is really interesting, being brought back to campaign in the Red Wall. Uh, uh, Nadine Dorries tweets, this story has been panic placed by number 10, 
probably by Isaac Levido, in a desperate attempt to halt any further defections to reform. There is no thawing of relations, no plans to campaign. Sunak and Johnson haven't spoken for over a year. That from Nadine Doris, who would know. She's saying this rubbish about Johnson has been placed by number 10 because they are terrified, on the back of Lee Anderson, that more MPs will defect to reform. Your response to that, Cindy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the story had about 12 hours to live. Yeah. <laughs> you know, number 10 put it out later, uh, late last night, saying that Boris Johnson is going to help them campaign. To my previous point about this coalition of 2019 MPs being brought together by Boris Johnson, that could have been a really helpful rallying cry for them, especially in the red wall seats. But, you know, not just Nadine Doris, Andrea Jenkins, who's also an ally of Boris Johnson, has also come out to say that this isn't quite what's going on behind the scenes. And so you can see this as a number 10, you know, strategy to try to prevent more defections. But I would also say that before we think that there are more defections coming, you know, it's quite a big move for any uh, Conservative MP to go to reform. Yep. Because essentially what you're saying is that, yes, of course, you might be facing electoral defeat, but a vote for reform now, electorally, calculusly speaking, um, is a vote for Labour. Mm. But you know, I guess you could also be saying to your constituents, vote. this is what I believe, do you believe with me? That, that, well, that I mean, if he really believed that, he should call by election yeah, <laughs> and I, go mate, vote it back you. in again. Precisely. <laughs> and also, he could have stayed as an independent. You know, it's not as though yes. he left the Tory party being a welcome member of the party. You know, he had already been... And he out. goes when he gets suspended or thrown out. I am with yeah. you 100% of the by-election. been saying it all morning. We have a prime minister who wasn't voted by the people. The people mm. of Ashworth need to decide whether Lee Anderson should be their MP, be it Reform, Conservative, Labour, Green or whatever else party he's going to join. That's what I believe is right. I don't think it's fair he sits there for yeah, six months. I really don't. If you look back to the Douglas Carswell example from 2015, <laughs> you know, he had defected from the Tories to UKIP, called a by-election because he believed in the principle of the thing, got re-elected for yeah. UKIP because he believed that the popular support for the party was so much. So if Lee Anderson's really concerned about people up and down the country wanting to support the reform cause, then he probably possibly should call by Very this. interesting. Moving on to a slightly different story now. Um, story here on the front page of The Guardian. Um, one of the biggest, or if the biggest, yeah. Tory donor um, has said some horrendous uh, racist comments uh, about black women, specifically targeting Diane Abbott. Uh, Rishi Sunak yet to say that he will reject any of this money that has been donated uh, by Frank Hester. Ten million quid. 10 million quid. He is the biggest donor of the Conservative Party. What a horrendous look that is, as if Sunak doesn't need him. <laughs> Why hasn't he thrown this man out already, Sunak? What is wrong well, with him? Well, it's 10 million quid, you know, so it's, 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 it's difficult for the Conservative Party. We've just talked about all the dire straits it's in right now. Yep. Um, I would be surprised if the Tories decide to kind of give back that money. They might really? say that they, they might say that in future, you know, he needs to do certain things uh, so that he can keep donating, but the, he'll, they'll, they'll probably fall back on the argument that the money's already with the party now. But it's also worth saying that Frank Hester has apologised for his comments, which were made three years ago. Um, and he's, he's tried to... Uh, apparently three he's, years apparently ago? Apparently he's tried to call Diane Abbott and to apologise to her in person. I mean, I think the person who think the comments are not accidental. If you see, you know, they're, they're so explicit and so yeah. detailed and so lengthy that they feel like more than just like a slip of the tongue. But uh, we're but back there again, apologized. aren't we? We're, 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 we're with the Lee Anderson thing, right? I, I, I've met Diane Abba. I think politically, no, right? But <laughs> Lee Anderson might feel that about Sadiq Khan. I hate yeah. what Sadiq Khan has done. I've got so many friends who are London cabbies who hate what Sadiq Khan has done. But you don't have to say the words that Lee Anderson said. You don't have to say what you Hester said. You don't have said. to link it's it to ridiculous. racism. You don't have no. to link it to gender. No. Um, because then you won't be taken seriously, will you, in anybody's book? One statement from TPP, I think, associated with um, Hester, or said about Hester, that um, his criticism had nothing to do with her gender nor colour of her skin, yet he said the words it makes you want to hate all black yeah. women. So he seems to be denying that link. But, you know, whether it, whether or not it will wash. You've got to ask the question as well. Keir Starmer has done, it would seem, a good job of rooting out anti-Semitism mm. within his party. Are, could, are the Tory party, with comparisons to how it used yeah, to be... Yeah, that's true, mate. Um, yeah, yeah. That's are the Tory true. party doing the same with racism within their own party? We'll have to see. Thank you so much for Cindy, joining you, what us. a pleasure Cindy that was. Thank you. From The Spectator.